welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church in Lantana, Florida. My name is Reese Leach. I'm an elder here. We're so glad that you could join us today and worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Normally, we'll have communion on the first Sunday of each month. However, this month we're going to share communion next week, the 8th of November. So put on your calendar, the 8th of November. And now let us turn our thoughts and attention to worshiping God by joining in the call to worship. This one is taken from Psalm 34. Please join me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. When I sought you, O oh God, you answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon God's countenance and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in you, O oh God. Let us worship God by singing and listening to Brad sing and play. Now thank we all our God. That's hymn number 788 for those of you with the hymnal at home. Brad. when it comes time to worship you. You are the source of all goodness as you bestow upon us bountiful mercy. When we feast our eyes upon your countenance, our faces radiate the glow of your glory. We lay before you now our offerings of praise and thanksgiving. Be pleased with our tokens of commitment to Christ who calls us, and may your spirit enhance our efforts as we worship your name. Amen. And now it's time for prayers of the people. Thank you so much for sending in your prayer requests. It really makes a difference when we pray for each other and for our country. God hears every word. He knows we care and he listens. Please join me. Today, oh God, is All Saints Day, and we remember those that have gone to be with you, most recently and many, many years ago. One day we will all be able to join again in your presence and with saints of old. Remind us, Lord, to think of these people that have touched our lives, that we can no longer be in contact with daily, but knowing, knowing the reunion will be sweet one day. We ask for prayers of healing for Valerie and Jeff Hester, for Keith, Jerry Kidder, Steve and Kim Landry, for the Harry family, and Ellen Keller, and many more that we don't know their names. We ask for healing and strength for our United States of America and common sense for our leaders and fellow citizens. We ask for protection for our health care providers, such as Lorna and Maureen, 
our first responders and firemen and policemen, teachers right here, Brad and Jim and Debbie, and guidance and support for all those friends of grace. And let them know that you, dear Lord, are walking beside us all the way. Remember Carolyn and Sarah, Tamar and Keith, Glenn and Genevieve, Bill and Edith, Millie and Chan and Jeff and Valerie, Steve, Jim and Reese, Jim, Debbie, Jimmy, Emily, Brad, Helen, Rick, Lorna and Barbara, Leonore, Annette and Annette, Terry. We say, God bless America. We need you so now, more than ever. Be with us as we go through each day. In your name we pray, dear Lord. Amen. I'll now read our prayer of confession. It is easy to judge those poor in spirit a failure and not a blessing. We often ask those who mourn to call us if they need something, rather than keep vigil by their side. We consider the meek weak and too often ignore them. Those who hunger and thirst often take too much of our time. We hear how we are to be merciful and pure in heart, and how we are to make peace with our neighbors, yet we harbor resentments that keep us apart. Forgive our failure to live your beatitudes, and in Christ, give us your blessing as we confess our sin. Amen. And through the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that our sins are forgiven. I'll now read our affirmation of faith, which is from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 
And now it's time for our tithes and offerings. Good news today, friends. Our well is going in at, at Grace. We are collecting $9,000 to be able to pay for it, and we're well on our way. But this week, they, the drillers started, and they're out for water testing right now to make sure that we have a clean well. We'll all be back together with clean water and working water here at the church very soon. And now for your tithes and offerings. Brad is going to play for us some wonderful music. Your donation can be sent to 1844 Hypoluxo Road, Lantana, Florida, 33462. Thank you and God bless you. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. This day we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. They have taught us of your love, O oh God. By their example, we have learned what it means to commit ourselves to Christ, how the Spirit guides us daily, and to dedicate our lives to your glory and honor. May these offerings we bring symbolize the commitment and continue the heritage of the saints gone by. Amen. And certainly there have been hundreds of saints gone by here at Grace, and we will allow others to stand on our shoulders in the future. Amen. I'll now read our Old Testament reading, which is Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From those who are deceitful and unjust to deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you cast me off? Why must I walk about mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? 
O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O oh God, my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted with me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Hear the word of God as it is written in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, beginning with verse 1. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do. For they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, and all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends the reading of our scripture lesson, the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Churchill is a little town in Manitoba, Canada, and it is most famous for being populated with polar bears. And we think of Halloween which we have here as being complicated with the pandemic and, and how candy will be given to children in the midst of dealing with this virus. But things are even more complicated in the little town of Churchill right there on the Hudson Bay. Children have to be very, very careful when they go trick-or-treating they have guidelines set up where the children are specifically asked not to wear white ghost costumes, that children not dress up in white outfits to look like doctors or nurses, that children certainly should not dress up to look like a seal, definitely no seal costumes. The reason being is that polar bears can show up at any time. I've seen this, this documentary before with National Geographic with these polar bears that wander into town. So to protect the children who are going door to door on Halloween night, conservation officers and game wardens patrol Churchill. And they walk up and down and they carry tranquilizer guns and. They carry shotguns for protection. And also, the police are there and, and they make noise and they flash blinding lights all around the town to chase away the polar bears because they don't like bright flashing lights. So we can see that Halloween is it's complicated here in the United States, but it's even more complicated 
in Manitoba. Now for Halloween, some people spend time putting a lot of thought into their costumes and their masks. And today, I want us to see in our scripture that Jesus is talking about the masks that people wear in life and the costumes that they wear, that, that they put on those masks. And he's not talking about Halloween, but he is talking about how people behave in real life. I want you to look, especially what he says about, about the Pharisees. Let's look at this. He says in verse 3, they do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. The phylacteries were, were rolled up little scrolls that they would attach to their headgear. And when people looked at a Pharisee, they could see these like little scrolls attached, sometimes made out of leather. And the Pharisees were proclaiming that the word of God was right on their head, right on their mind, and, and that they were close to the Word of God. They, they were close in trying to be near God. And then they had fringes on their robe to try to bring them additional attention in the temple. And Jesus says, and they also would go about uh, to banquets and they would seek the place of honor, the head table, and they would always try to get the best seat in the synagogue. And so what Jesus was saying was that they were people who were seeking honor rather than what Jesus calls us to do as Christians, to live lives of, of being humble and being of service to others. Everything the Pharisees did, they were doing for show for other people. And I think you get the idea. And so Jesus says, they don't do what they preach. They're not practicing what they preach. Have you ever run into somebody like that? I'm sure you have. I think all of us have. Many of you will remember the stories about Jesse James being the well-known bank robber in the old, old Wild West, Jesse James. And historians are always studying his life. There was recently a documentary on, on doing, doing a DNA test to see if Jesse James was truly buried in the grave where they thought he was buried. But Jesse James was one of these people, he definitely put on a mask. I mean, yeah, he put on a mask to rob banks, but the way he acted in life, he, he would rob a bank and then that same day, according to historians, he went to a little church and he was baptized. But his life was not changed. He was off again robbing banks. And one of the things uh, that happened to Jesse James, he had a conflict because he couldn't be in church on Sundays because he was busy robbing trains because that's when they came through on Sundays. You can see the conflict. He didn't practice what he preached. And we also know that uh, there's so many people that that suffer from this. We know politicians who suffer from this. And it's certainly something that Jesus calls us to do with our lives, to do the best that we can do. The truth is, unfortunately, all of us wear masks at different times. Sometimes we try to pretend to be people that we aren't. 
Jesus wants us to be real. He wants us to be true, faithful disciples. And he calls us all to Christian leadership, that we might truly radiate the love of Christ and service and humbleness to others. I think of people like some friends that I had a meal with last night who had taken a mission trip to Cuba a while back. And one of the things that they did was they took a lot of prescription, well, I should say non-prescription glasses that they got from the drugstores those reading glasses, so that the older people there could see more clearly when they were looking at something in detail. And one of the problems there in Cuba was that the people were given bags of rice, some of the poor people, but when they poured the rice out, they needed reading glasses to look real carefully to make sure there weren't stones and little twigs in the rice. And so this was of great help to the older people there. God calls us to be of service to him in many different ways. One person that I think about is Clarence Jordan. And on this All Saints Sunday, I think of him as being a saint in the church. He was always striving to be close to the Lord and to follow him. And one of the things, certainly that as I get older, and I think you could take some time to do that too, is to think about people in your life who have been true saints, who are with the Lord now in heaven, and to remember that they are still with us, that their spirits are still present with us, and as Paul says, they encourage us to, to run the race in life and to be strong in our faith. Well, for Clarence Jordan, he was a man in the 1950s who, who had a degree in agriculture and he felt called to the ministry. And he became quite a biblical scholar. He could read the Greek in the scriptures and he could translate Greek words and he became a real scholar in this area. But the amazing thing about Clarence Jordan is that not only could he understand the scriptures in Greek, he also had a unique understanding of looking carefully at the scriptures with almost a childlike vision and seeing how they applied to everyday life. And so Clarence Jordan read the book of Acts closely and he saw how Paul said the early Christians shared what they had and encouraged and prayed and helped one another. And he had a vision that he could go and get some land in Georgia. And this was right outside of America, Georgia, and have a farm there in a very rural area and he would invite other people to come and to farm the land. And what was unique about this in the 1950s is that he was encouraging people of all races to come and to, to work together in farming the land and they could share the crops together. Well, during this time, it was just the beginning of the civil rights movement, there were a lot of people who were against this that, that were still practicing segregation and, and had very, very hateful views toward other people. And so here's Clarence Jordan with people, blacks and whites working together, farming the land. And there were people who were shooting, shooting into their barns at night. And there were people who were even setting the crops on fire at different times. And so it wasn't easy 
for him during this time to strive for this vision of, of Christian unity, of working together. Even his daughter had a difficult time. She was in school, in high school, and, and she came home one day in tears, and, and Clarence said, what, what's wrong? And she said, well, there's this boy, Bobby, and he, he's been pushing me around. He's, he's been a bully, and he's, he, he's knocked me to the ground, and I, I dropped my notebook and my papers went everywhere. And, and Clarence Jordan said, well, I am going to find this boy. I'm going to find him. And when I find him, for 15 minutes, I'm going to set aside being a Christian, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to give him the whipping of his life for the way in which he's been treating you. And, and Clarence was so angry, and, and his daughter said, Daddy, you can't do that. I've heard you preach your sermons, and you, you call people to live their lives fully for Christ. How could you set aside 15 minutes and not be a Christian? How could you do that? And she was right. Jesus calls us to strive to be Christians with our whole life. To follow him. And that's what we are called today on this All Saints Sunday. To be faithful to the Lord. And to remember to walk the walk of Christ every day. Not just some days, but really strive to do that every day. To walk and to live the true life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. And we thank you for the saints who have gone before us and how they were faithful to you. And we pray that we might be your saints, that we might live our lives and be a blessing to those around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
And now may the grace and the peace and the love of Jesus Christ go with you all. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now and stay, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show. Watching from above.